that chant just now, the world is swept away, there's no one in charge. There's one way you can listen to it that's very depressing. But there's another way you can listen to it that's liberating. It's depressing if you think you're going to find happiness in the world, in worldly things. But it's liberating when you realize that you have the right to search for happiness. There's nobody who can tell you that you can't. And as John Fuhrer often liked to say, we're nobody's servant. Nobody hired us to be born. Nobody hired us to practice. We're here of our own volition. And we can do with our lives what we want. Now that may sound selfish, but it's not. If you think about it with some wisdom and some discernment, you realize you've got the choice. The Buddha offers refuge. You can choose to go there. You can choose to do the practice that leads to refuge. And the refuge isn't only at the very end of the path. The path itself provides refuge. When we take refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha, which is one of the reasons why we chant those chants about the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha every night, it's to remind ourselves of the examples that they set. The example of the Buddha, someone who through his own efforts was able to find true peace, true happiness, by watching his efforts and learning from them. He did learn from his other teachers, but there came a point we had to learn from himself. And this is how you learn for yourself. You look at your actions. Because that's the whole point of these refuges. We look at the Buddha's example and we try to follow it in our lives. The example of the Dharma, we follow that in our lives. The example of the Sangha, the Noble Sangha, we follow that in our lives. And in so doing, we turn ourselves into a refuge. You think about the qualities of the Buddha. Wisdom, purity, compassion. They're all qualities that he developed because he wasn't anybody's servant. He decided to look for a true happiness, a happiness that was totally satisfactory. And whatever obligations the world was trying to place on him, he didn't fall in love with those. Which meant, of course, that he had to leave home, go into the wilderness, and find his way. But it was for the sake of true happiness. And in doing so, he developed those three qualities. First was wisdom. As you know, the question for wisdom, beginning of wisdom or discernment, starts with, what, when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? And that question is wise because, one, you realize that happiness is going to have to depend on your actions. And two, you want long-term. It goes together with another question. But when I do, it will lead to my long-term harm and suffering. Your actions do make the difference, so you want to be careful. So the wisdom there also lies in the principle of heedfulness, that you have to choose your actions well. But the underlying motivation is happiness. The search for happiness is nothing to be ashamed of. There are some schools of thought that say you've got to put everybody else's happiness ahead of yours. But the Buddha said, no, when you do that, how do you know what happiness is? How can you give guidance to other people in happiness? If you can find it for yourself, then you can give guidance. So this is not a selfish thing. That following, and that is the principle of compassion. Realizing that you are Happiness, if it's going to be long-term, can't depend on the suffering of others. This issue comes up in that scene between King Basenadi and Queen Malika. They're alone in the palace one evening, and in a tender moment the king turns to the queen and says, Is there anyone you love more than yourself? And you know what he's thinking. But the queen is no fool, and of course this is the Pali Canon, and she says, no, there's nobody I love more than myself. And how about you? Is there anybody you love more than yourself? 
the king put on the spot has to admit, well, no. Here he is a king and he can't even get some, someone to love him more than himself. It's impossible. So he leaves the palace, goes to see the Buddha, and reports the conversation. The Buddha said, you know, she's right. You could search the whole world and there's nobody you'd find that you'd love more than yourself. At the same time, everybody else loves themselves just as fiercely. So instead of drawing the conclusion that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, the Buddha says, you should always be careful never to harm anyone or never to get anybody to harm any, anyone else. In other words, you should make sure your happiness doesn't depend on harming anybody. So here again, the principle of compassion comes from the search for happiness. Then finally, purity. This comes in the Buddhist teachings to Rahula, when he has Rahula look at his actions. And if he sees that he's planning to do something that's going to cause harm, he should stop. If he's doing something that's causing harm, he should stop. If he's done something and only afterwards realized that it caused harm, then he should talk it over with someone and make up his determine that he's not going to repeat that mistake, have a sense of shame around that mistake. In other words, be ashamed of repeating it. That's a healthy kind of shame, the shame that goes with a sense of honor, that you want to do what's right. After all, you've made up your mind, you want long-term happiness, well, look at what you're actually doing to make sure that you're actually doing it well, doing it right acting in line with that principle. So they are. There they are. The discernment, purity, compassion. These all come from looking for happiness in a wise way. Looking for happiness is going to be secure. And the Buddha says it is possible. One of the worst misunderstandings about Buddhism is that it's pessimistic. People say, oh, I thought these Four Noble Truths are all about suffering. Even interpret the truths as saying life is suffering. They interpret the three perceptions as saying, well, there really is no self, it's just events happening, so you might as well give up. There's nothing you can do. That's all misperception. There are four noble truths, they're not just one. There's the cessation of suffering, there's a path to the cessation of suffering. And the cessation of suffering is something unfabricated. Even those three perceptions, the perceptions of inconstancy, stress, not self, they don't apply to what's unfabricated. And the unfabricated lies beyond. We use those perceptions to test anything that's possibly a source of happiness. To check and see, is this the real thing? If it's inconstant, no. Stressful, no. If it's either constant and stressful, is it worth calling yourself or is it worth calling yours? No. Then there must be something better. So actually the Buddhist teachings are very positive. The possibility of a true happiness, an ultimate happiness, happiness that's not touched by anything, is there. And if we want it, we can do what is needed to get there. There's nobody stopping us. People might try to stop us, but they have no right to. We're free to follow this path. The only real slavery out there is our slavery to our cravings. That's what you've got to watch out for. Those are the things that pull you back. So remember, as you practice, you're nobody's servant. You're doing this voluntarily. And when you come to the end of the practice, you're not anything's servant. You're not the servant of craving at all anymore. The craving that pretends to be your friend, but is actually ordering you around. The image they use in Thailand is of a water buffalo. When you have a water buffalo, you put a ring in its nose, and then you tie a rope to the ring, and then you want to pull the buffalo wherever you want it to go. You've got to pull the nose, and the buffalo's got to go because his nose hurts. That's another image that John Fuhrman liked to use, is that the craving has a ring in our nose, and it's pulling on it. You've got to learn how to cut the rope. So 
So the principle being nobody's servant will then apply all around, not only outside but also inside, where it really matters.